school mailed a letter to his parents saying the boy was no longer showing up for classes, his mob friends knew what to do. They took the mailman aside and had a little chat with him. They told him, he says, you know, if he ever delivered another letter, you know, from the school to my house, that uh, he, they'd stick him in the oven. You know, it, it made me feel good, you know. I, I was a part of something. I was a little one of them. By this point, Henry's real father, Henry Hill Sr., was slowly giving up on his eldest son. He couldn't control him. He couldn't stop him. And, and Henry was very defiant, and he was very obnoxious. The more Henry rejected his father, the closer he became to Paul Vario and the mob. Vario soon gave 12-year-old Henry a promotion to errand boy. He began making pizzas at a mob-run pizzeria on the same block as the cab stand. He was like a mascot. So, you know, they thought he was, he was funny. He wouldn't work very hard at doing the right things, but he would certainly work very hard, and he would be very loyal to them. By his early teens, Henry was not only acting the part, he was dressing it as well. Once he bought himself a fancy suit for Easter Sunday, the style of it and the price tag shocked his mother. He started dressing himself like a little gangster. She said, you look like a goddamn little gangster. And uh, so we would tell him the same thing, but it didn't matter to him. Henry was now making a lot of money, in some weeks as much as his father, and he did nothing to conceal it. He was showy about everything, Henry. You know, look at me, I just did this. Look at me, I just did that. My father didn't want any part of his money. Never took a penny from him. Never would take a gift from him. My father wouldn't open a gift if Henry gave it to him. Never, till the day he died. The teenager didn't mind his father's disapproval because he felt he was part of something bigger and more important than his own family. After all, he was on his way to becoming a wise guy. The 1950s were a golden era of profits and power for the New York Mafia, and teenager Henry Hill was determined to grab his piece of the action. Henry had defied his family by dropping out of school and becoming an errand boy for a mob crew run by Paul Vario. Vario gave Henry more responsibility as he realized that the kid had a way with numbers. So the young gangster progressed to cashing counterfeit bills running craps games, and selling stolen merchandise. In 1957, when Henry was just 14 years old, Paulie gave him another kind of special status, a membership card to the Bricklayers Union. You get a union card certifying that you're a member in good standing of this union and therefore are entitled to be paid union wages. And even better than that, you will get a no-show job. You would go once a week and pick up your paycheck. The union card gave Henry access to any construction site in the city so he could pick up bets and payments. This was an especially tough blow for Henry's father, who had wanted his oldest son to follow in his union footsteps. His only dream was to see his sons follow him into the electrical union, which at the time was a father-son union. He never did things to even meet my dad halfway, as far as uh, at least uh, attempting things to make him proud of him. That's all my dad ever really wanted. The teenage gangster was more interested in pursuing his criminal career than in pleasing his dad. He was arrested for the first time at the age of 16 for using a stolen credit card. The mob had him out of police hands in a couple of hours and threw him a party. They celebrated. I broke my cherry, you know, that's w w what they were saying. Maybe it was difficult for someone else to get arrested, but, uh, you know, for us type of guys, it was, it, you know, it was no big deal. Henry Hill had been initiated into the underworld. He was enjoying everything that the mob lifestyle had to offer, including easy money, fast women, and the best tables in New York's hottest nightclubs. Still, some part of Henry remained loyal to his real family and the values of his father, including patriotism. So the 17-year-old enlisted in the Army in 1960 as a paratrooper, 
His father was more than willing to sign the papers for his underage son. Private Henry Hill was stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He became a cook and a member of the prestigious 82nd Airborne. I think my father thought he would be normal then once he went in the, once Henry went in the service and that he would uh, conform to regular life. Whatever it was that inspired Henry to enlist faded rapidly and the military became just another hustle. He began loan sharking, running numbers, even selling food he stole from the kitchen. He would go AWOL to take care of business and return in a limousine. Hill was finally arrested and discharged in 1963. At 20, he was back in Brooklyn and back with the Vario crew. He did whatever the mob asked him to do. Loan sharking, extortion, and transporting stolen goods. Along the way, he met a kindred spirit, a 32-year-old Irishman named Jimmy Burke. Burke was a professional hijacker for the Varios. His specialty, stealing cargo from JFK Airport. The two men, who both knew they'd never be full members of the mob because of their Irish backgrounds, developed a strong bond. Henry started moving the cargo that Jimmy stole from JFK, including electronics, jewelry, and clothing. Henry and Jimmy would come together on a given day, every day. What's the plan? Where's the action? Where's the score? Can we make a score today? Henry had certain skills that made him a successful gangster. He was a good con man, and he was charming. Women also fell for his smooth delivery, including a 19-year-old dental hygienist from Long Island named Karen Freed. Henry and Karen met on a blind date. Karen, like a lot of Jewish girls from the Five Towns area of Long Island, um, was like a moth to a flame, was, was attracted to these types, mafia hoods. She was a nice girl. She was a smart, she was bright, she was funny, she was intelligent, she was educated. He was exciting. He was totally different than anything she knew. She knew these country club types. She made me feel great and, uh, I mean, it was just, every, you know, the chemistry was there. It was, uh, you know. It was instant love. In 1965, after only three months of dating, the couple eloped to North Carolina. When they returned to New York, Henry converted to Judaism, and the couple had a Jewish wedding. Karen's parents were heartily thrilled that their new son-in-law was a street thug. For their part, Henry's parents had no problem with his religious conversion, but his father did have a strong objection to the guest list and refused to attend the wedding. At their wedding, the Varios and all of their associates came. And when they walked in, they came in together, and everybody in the place just, everybody got stone dead silent. 